Hi. Listen, shut up. It's time to be sensible, all right? Hello, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to right. Amazon Music. Uh, my apologies. I've got my... Sorry there. I'm doubling up on the sound. How are you, everybody? It's good to be with you on Amazon Music. My name is Bees. Welcome to Group Thread Shreds, because this month, Rock is taking over the Group Thread show. If you've been here before, you will have seen and know that these are roundtable discussions about very serious things with not very serious people. Uh, I'm Bees. He is Austin. Austin, you seem to have taken umbrage to that. Are you, are you in a very serious mood, my friend? I'm a serious person. <laughs> and I resent the fact that I walk into this arena and you treat me like a jester just because I'm eating fucking fruit snacks. Uh, what fruit snacks are they, though? Is, is fruit snacks a, a brand thing out here or have you got something very specific? Oh, yeah, you guys are missing all the good shit. Hang on. Bring it on. Bring it on. Mudson, while he's just letting us know what <laughs> snacks he's eating, what's your favorite fruit snack? <laughs> Gushers, Gushers, oh. 100%. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm right. a fan of the Gusher. It Gushers feels dirty, also... though. Even from its name, it feels There's dirty. There's something about these. They're like these, like, four... they're, they're better than like all the Scooby-Doo looking ones and shit. Oh, Scooby-Doo ones were <laughs> good. Serious. They are, the but blue, The blue Scooby-Doo fruit snack was fire. I th what, what fruits are blue? Blueberries? Is that it? No, it's yeah. blue. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> hey, we're off to a flyer we are of course here today to talk about the resurgence of pop punk i didn't realize that you guys while uh are aware of each other and have had conversations before yeah. you've never met in person yeah i thought your cross your paths might have crossed i'm sure i don't know how have. it hasn't i don't know how it hasn't honestly but yeah this is like the first time i don't even know if we've ever really spoke before but i watch i i've see, i see everything he does and i listen to every release i think i think water parks is amazing man for real Man, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. Really. So, uh, we were just talking beforehand, um, Austin, speaking of water parks, you were saying you, your voice is kind of shot because you are recording at the moment. How, how's the record going, man? It's getting there. I've been yelling all day. And that's going to make some people on Twitter excited. They're like, they need more angry songs. They need more angry. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not mad like all the fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lot of angry stuff on the new record? There's a little bit. A little bit, a yeah. little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. Mod Sun. There's gotta be dynamic to it, emotional range. Absolutely, we're, three, we're 360 people. Yeah. Mod Sun, are you working on new stuff as well? Cause we've got a new song that came out a month ago, but uh, I've been bumping your record from 2021 loads and dying for more. Yes, yes, definitely, thank you. Yeah, Internet Killed the Rockstar came out last year. I, uh, I've been working on this new album since the release of that one. So been kind of sporadically here and there, um, do my best to not, not force it and just kind of when, when inspiration hits, make it. So been, um, over the last year, just finishing up this new record and I'm very, very close, but I kind of work right to the deadline. So I have like an <laughs> idea of when I'm going to release this and I'm just going to like keep working all the way until then. When's your deadline? I think like end of summer is probably okay. oh. probably like when I need to to push it out. Anything longer, I think I'd be like kind of losing the momentum that I've been building. So yeah, probably by end of summer, I'm just gonna work all the way up until then, and then release a bunch of stuff throughout the summer. Yeah, I love deadlines. Yeah, nah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, working backwards, reverse engineer the whole thing. Mm. That's a th you, know, you always if, think if, if someone doesn't tell me when it's due, I'll just keep going. Yeah. Uh -huh. Become, becoming a rock star, you think that homework and deadlines are over, but nah. -uh. I love structure. <laughs> I really do. I do. I work more now than I did in school, definitely. I have way more homework now. <laughs> I, I can believe it. So today's subject, we're all going to be talking about the, the resurgent, the rampant resurgent rise of pop punk. Um, I think I'd like to open up with you, Austin, because... Where the genre's been has been quite interesting. I've got a lot of mates in the genre. And I remember having this conversation, clang, name drop, straight from the beginning. Uh, Alex Gaskar <laughs> from All Time Low and I were having Take a conversation. And it was, 
there, blam, there it is. Um, but they they had like um, when the Baltimore Ravens reached the Super Bowl, yeah. uh, they had that song "Do It for Baltimore" and still couldn't get on radio. My mates in a day to remember as well had got massive, but it just felt like there was a glass ceiling because rock radio is like. I love Five Finger Death Punch, but a lot of bands that sound one way. Dude, and it you just... got to be like a beer dad. Like you have yeah. to appeal to like, like dads with like super red skin from like drinking beer. Uh, has, that been frust- has that been frustrating, Austin? No. I don't no. want to hear those people. Fuck them. If they don't I, like I, it, like whatever, dude. Like it's not like shit's going poorly. We don't need, to, we don't need the dads. If they just want to Five Finger Death Punch the whole shit, whatever. It's fine. I tell you what it is, is that because oh. we've got Turnstile on the show next week. And I think about a band like that, that Spin yeah. have just made like Artist of the Year and all the rest of it. Dude, and when the rock album, artist. That new album's year, so fun. I love it's, it. It's ridiculous how good it yeah. is, man. I know. And like, where, if there's not a place on, on radio or on mainstream for something mm-hmm. like that, it feels like something's got to break down the door. And you've, you've worked through that. You've been one of the. The, the kind of leading lights of pop punk for the better part of the last sort of five or six years. No pressure. Um, but th- like, has it felt like there's a glass ceiling? And are you starting to see that shit crumble right now? Because it really feels like it. I think, th- okay. Obviously there's always going to be, you know, like what we do is like rooted in like a pop punk way. Cause we all came up with like the same shit, like blank, good Charlotte, some 41 all of that. And I feel like the more we've veered out of that kind of, or at least the more specific definition of that lane, I think the more we've swayed and gone into other directions. Um, I mean, and that's not even like necessarily like a conscious thing. It's just, you know, making shit that we actually like and listen to and stuff. But I feel like our biggest things, at least from the last few years, they're not very pop punk driven. They're very like, hard drum and bass or like um the one that has like the most streams like missing sex voice i don't want to die anymore it's like it's like a big like it's like all the guitars are like acoustic and shit are like really dreamy yeah. and burby but you know like big drums it's almost kind of like like an indie rock sort of thing um mm. not to be like a fucking genre goober but like i don't know i feel like the more we've leaned into like things that we like that we listen to and that we are currently, you know, very interested in. I feel like it's, it's, uh, gone very well. And I think it'll, like I said, it'll always have those roots, but it's not necessarily about like paying homage to the past. It's like, uh, it's about trying to like take what was and push it like forward. Yeah. I I think that's the most exciting thing about what's going on at the minute. My son, your, your take on that, because you're like you're part of a new switching of the sound of what pop punk is, because some, something that's very interesting to me, because I, I'm old, man. I, I've been around for long. I'm 38. Uh, but like, sweet. Checks in the post, Austin. Uh, <laughs> your hat takes three more years off you. <laughs> it definitely does. It totally does. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the, the thing that, that has been interesting has been we were kind of known for a certain sound. And I think that a lot of people point to the bands that you were just saying about. Mod, I'd love to get your take on this because a lot of people from the scene point at Blink-182 and that being the kind of sound. But I don't think enough people from our world pay enough homage to where the vocals have gone. Cause I, I hear a lot of peep, I hear a lot of juice world to combine with that kind of thing. What's your take on traditional pop punk versus where it is now? Well, I definitely, the traditional pop punk is in my DNA and there is, I would say in my music specifically, my favorite part of what pop punk was and, and how I grew up was definitely the aesthetic of what the scene was. And I think that's that's why I think it's having the biggest comeback right now is because there's definitely this mentality of us against the world happening. I think that's that's kind of something that disappeared for a while in music. It became very, very focused on me against the world, kind of an aesthetic. And um, 
I just remember when I first got into the scene and emo music and screamo music and like my first bands were I was I was in a band that sounded like we would be on drive through records. We we're like the starting <laughs> lines biggest fan. Then I was in a band that sounded like kind of like fucking like armor for sleep. It was like a right. little more. And then I was in a band that sounded like fucking under oath, you know. And so I kind of hit all three of those areas and corners of what that was. But when it came down to it, what I remember is the shows. I remember going to shows. I remember being a fan of music. I think that why it's happening right now is really the idea that there is more than just the music happening. It is the lifestyle of it, you know? Like there is, okay, let's just be honest. Like, I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna just point to, to punk rock in general, just true punk rock, Vivian Westwood, like clearly who is Vivian Westwood for anyone out there, super involved with the Sex Pistols, Malcolm McLaren, all that. She was like, punk was, was a style before it was a sound. You know what I'm saying? There is, there is a, a whole side of this music that we make that is style. It is, it goes yeah. deeper than just the music and it goes into what it, what it feels like to be at a show, what it feels like to want to be front row, to literally fight through people to get to the front row. And it's not like, that was gone for a long time, you know? That really was. I felt like shows were missing that element of wanting to be, you know, most of the time from where I grew up, how I felt was that the bands were on stage for the audience. It wasn't the bands were on stage to be the star of the show. It was like the stars of the show was the audience. And I really feel like that's happening again. And um, I mean, dude, like when I make music right now, and what I'm trying to do with mine is feel the way that I felt when I heard Adam Lazaro fucking sing, you know? I want to him so bad. Yo, <laughs> I mean, facts. And, like, that register and, like, man, another, I'm just going to keep saying what was missing. Like, I feel like that register was missing. I feel like the yelling so, dashboard, dashboard, that style yeah. of where you felt like you heard someone's heart breaking on the mic. You felt like you, you were listening to someone die. You know, um, I feel like that's happening again. And for a long time, it was like bedroom artists whispering into a mic. You know what I'm saying? Love all those artists. But there's a different thing when someone is literally yelling their heart out into a mic. And um, history repeats itself, man. It does it over and over and over. And if it was going to pick up one thing to resonate with right now and kind of push back into the mainstream, I would want it to be something that had like a sense of community and had a sense of pure emotion, you know, like much love to the Adele's out there and the people that can sing perfectly. But there's a whole different thing when you can just feel someone's emotion, you know, I agree. And that that's all I try to do with my music. Like I am not professionally trained at anything, but like I like to think that if you can take something from my music is that you can feel it, you know. Yeah, there's that rancid line that when I've got the music, I've got a place to go. And it's so funny, man. Like, I think so many of us, when we find, find this music, like me personally, I'm a fucking alien compared to my family. And like my friend group always felt weird. But when I found this music and I found the community spirit of it, like it literally changed my life. It's why I'm sat here now. Ooh, like, bro, me too. The, like it's got to feel good to put it, to be putting that in people's chests again. But do you think that's what it is? Is that a lot of the, cause what's really interesting about this is it's the first time that rock music has been bothering the mainstream in a long ass time. MGK had a number one record last week. The Chili Peppers are going to take his number one this week. That's two rock number ones in a row. I can't remember that's the last crazy. time that shit happened. That's hard, you know, bro. That's hard. It, right, isn't it? That's hey, the shit. Guitar, guitar is the instrument of the decade again, you know, and it was gone for a very long time. It really was. You turn on the radio and like you would not, you would turn on a rock station, you wouldn't hear guitar. You know, for real. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And, it, and it felt like all the bands like were almost having to kind of iron out the like the, the distortion in their guitar sounds and things like that. Chat, don't worry, I'm gonna get you for some Q and A's later on. I haven't forgotten you, I'm not ignoring you. But like there was plenty yes, of bands. Is. 
Yeah, <laughs> I kind of had, but don't hold it against me. Uh, like, when I look at the story so far and the Wonder Years and people like that, like a band like Four Years Strong would have been massive in a different era. Who is going to bring back the pop punk breakdowns, bro? I'm waiting for it. I'm like, who's next? Who is going to hey, do well, that? Austin was saying he's shouting, so... You never yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. You never know. <laughs> but do, do, does it feel like the new that? Water Parks album is all double kick, ladies and gentlemen? He <laughs> let it out Park. now. <laughs> the full Slaughter Parks album coming. Slaughter Park, hard, bro, hard. <laughs> Wait, can you hear him, Austin? No, but we should pretend we can. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I agree, dude. Pop punk for sure. Let's talk. <laughs> Yo, you disappeared, bro. The fuck? Give me a second. There you go. There you go. Am I back? Oh, we're back. We're back. But, but you were very entertaining with what you were just saying. Give me a second. I'm certain. Hold on. Am I back? <laughs> yes, you're good. <laughs> right. Good. Thank you. Um, but yeah, like, does it feel like that? What has brought that back? Like, do you think that people would just add enough of that me against the world? Do you think people would just add enough of that? Because um, even even though Mod Sun, you're you're so you're something of a solo artist, and there's a lot of solo artists that are working with people. Does it feel like um, like that? What do you think has brought that communal feeling back? Why did people need that again? Are you asking me specifically why? Hey, either or. This I, Austin, I've been... go ahead. You you take this one. I just talked for ten minutes. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, man. You're good. You're good. Um, I don't know, man. I think everything goes in waves. Um, I think it takes about ten years, and then there's a counterculture to whatever is currently going on. Um, I, I think that. Um, I feel like things, yeah, it's, it's cyclical and it almost kind of starts ironic usually like whatever trend is going on, but it's, it's always the opposite of whatever's currently happening. So I feel like where the 2010s were predominantly pop and hip hop oriented, not that those are going remotely anywhere. They're not, but I think, um, where those people started to kind of tease guitars in songs here and there and live performances or whatever it all, or like when they'd be like, yeah, it's heavy metal or they'd be doing like kind of like a borderline bit, but not, and have like, you know, yeah. guitar or those and like alt versions and stuff. I think that kind of paves the way for, for it to be back in a real way. And I think that's kind of what happened. I think it was just time. Um, and yeah, it's, I don't know. It's, it, it's kind of what happened in the uh, early 2010s when a lot of the uh, hardcore guys decided like pop punk was like going to be a thing again. Yeah. Like where um, like the, I don't know, like, like, like all the, like a lot of hardcore dudes were like newfound glory and then made a lot of these bands. Yeah. Um, but then it was like, for real, it's kind of like, like it, it always sort of starts in that way. And then, and then becomes what is like uh, the the main thing. Like and it goes it goes that way with like everything. It goes that way with fucking like slang. Even like you start saying "bro" as a joke, and now yeah. I type "bruh" to people. <laughs> like you know what I'm fucking saying? Like, yeah. And I think that people do like it. it almost kind of starts as like a novelty for a second, and then becomes the real thing. And I think where the 2010s, like I was saying, were like very not rock or band oriented, they came around and were just redone in a way that um, kind of like paved the way for it to be the real deal now. Yeah, Awesome Appalooza in the chat makes a really good point about collaborations as well. So when I used to talk to people, because I've been in the business for as long as I am, when you would talk to people behind the scenes about why it, it work, why other genres are having greater success than what was going on in guitar music. Collaborations was a really big thing. And that feels like something that's really changing with yeah. this. Uh, like, and Austin, I'll go to you first because we've had like criticism for us that that has not been the case in the scene. And no. it's, it's definitely changing as we'll get mm -hmm. to like, why do you think that that was the case? Cause it's been really cool seeing like Ollie from bring me the horizon has been doing yeah. loads of cool stuff with hyper pop act. 
rights yeah. and like people are really stepping outside of their comfort zone. Why do you think that rock was so insular for so long? I think because of like some weird punk ethos bullshit where everybody was kind of like, I don't know, like, like, um, I, I don't pay attention to it as much now, but I, I noticed when we were first kind of coming up like 20, like 17 or so, it was like when people started like knowing who we were 2016, 2017, I noticed like a weird mentality of like, bands are very like for themselves and very like nervous about like being passed up. And like, even like people that are further along were like kind of like nervous about you. You know what I mean? Mm. Like when you're, when you're suspicious, first, when you're first coming, they're like, Oh, this is good. We love this. You know, you get the shout outs online and everything. And then you start to kind of like rise up a little bit and they're like, huh. And then they start being kind of weird. And then, if you get past that and you become like a, I'm not saying this is where we are or anything at all, but mm. I'm saying when you become a bigger thing, like a fallout boy or a paramore or whatever, then it's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I love that. You know, there's, there's like this strange middle ground where it's like, everybody's very competitive. And I think it can get a little bitter and strange, but I feel like that's why there wasn't a lot of collaboration because mm. people were kind of, I mean, it's probably like ego and fear. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I'm glad people are moving past that now because it's cool. Like during, during, uh, 2020, when I was working on, uh, greatest hits or last album, uh, that was the first time I actually started having friends contribute. You know what I mean? But a large part of that was, was being so isolated all the time. Like, like I live alone and shit that I was like, when I was making music, eventually I was just like, I need to have some kind of fucking connection so I'd be like, hey, you know who would sound really good on this one is like, like Dallin, for example. I'd be like, hey, I like in this outro, I'm kind of picturing this. You can say no and tell me to fuck myself. All good. I, it's fine. Like, we'll be friends no matter what. But if you did this kind of like a wall of vocals, whatever, on this outro, that'd be fucking sick. Da, da, da. And he would do it. I'm like, oh, my God. And then like Zeph, for example, I was like, her voice is just so like her layering is just so pretty. And like her, she's just insane at harmonizing and stuff. I was like. I want you to just do your thing on this one. You know what I mean? So it's like that yeah. for me personally, I think just came from being isolated in 2020. You know what I mean? Mm. But um, Is, is that yeah. something you're keen to continue, Austin? Because yeah. it's worked I, I for you guys. Because um, it was just such an interesting thing. Like I, I would be like asking people to do things that like I don't think I could do personally. You know what I mean? And I think yeah. asking a bunch of other people who do – really cool things on your songs, like adds so much more like depth and dimension and ultimately just makes your project better. I so, agree. I agree. Anyway, all of that to say, yes, uh, uh, there's more collaboration on this album. Fuck. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to Dan and Zeph as well. love that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hey, but son, um, same thing. Cause like, it's really changed. And I, I've like, I gotta say, <laughs> I know I'm on safe ground here. Um, when we were young fest, when that happens later on in the year, one of my favorite things about it is fucking our scene is finally going to get to give Avril her flowers. Like oh, yeah. I used to, I gotta tell you, man, I used to DJ when fucking, when the first record was out, when Let's Go was out, I used to DJ and it used to be my favorite thing to do in rock and metal clubs was to start Skater Boy and watch everyone go, yes! Oh shit, no, I'm not supposed to, right? And, and it's, it's so funny to, to, to go from there for her to be royalty of the scene. And when we were Young Fest, it's gonna be a real moment for that. And you've had her on, on a track and you've yeah. had MGK on a track, but like, I'm super interested in when you get Black Bear involved as well like yeah. what is it about people outside of punk that when you're coming at them with this that are like yeah i'll have some of that like like it must be really exciting and inspiring for you to be because you're from our scene you've lived here forever like bringing yeah. people in is <clears throat> rad you know you know the, the, the it, it is such a great question and it's really crazy to think back that like within let's just call it rock music alt music anything with guitar and real drums yo you didn't see features 
literally until like the last couple of years, you just didn't see other bands work with other bands. Could you imagine like if Bob Dylan and the Beatles made a song together, they were like literally hand in hand friends together, play like around each other. There was never an idea of bringing two singers together. Really? Like, I mean, it happened here and there. Definitely. Um, it's just a funny thing. And then obviously like the world of rap was really based on the opposite spectrum where it was like collab, collab, collab. And I spent so many years inside the world of rap that it was always like a thing that I understood was the, the idea of collaboration and how powerful that is now, like going forward and back kind of living in the middle ground of this, like for so long, I really feel like, why the why the band thing maybe didn't collab that much why the band thing can you still hear me or am i frozen yeah yeah yeah. we can still hear you okay. um why the band thing was like kind of maybe not where it is right now is i think for a while it was really hard for people it started to be something that was focused so much on singularity it was like a focus on one person. It was hard for a general audience to focus on five different members of a band. Like the boy band era, it was like, seriously, it was like you picked your favorite member of the boy band, right? Yeah. That was what people did. So it was always like this thing where it was people, it was really hard to love every single member of the band, I feel like. And then when, when the solo artist thing popped off and really went hard in this last, like the last good part of this decade, with rappers and solo artists, it was like very easy for people to just have their attention on one person and fall in love with that. I think it's back to the point where, yeah, I am, I am considered a solo artist, but like, you know, I also have like this band aesthetic as well, where it's like bring this group of people along with me. Um, and uh, just the idea of collab and everything, um, you know, we're in the age of Spotify and I think that everyone understands that. I don't understand this one. Like everyone thinks that like a headline tour is really where you like go out and you like gain a new audience and stuff. I'm like, how, how does that happen? Like it should be, it really comes from a support tour, you mm. know? And then you gotta be a great entertainer because you can get eaten alive on that stage or you could yeah. leave with the entire crowd loving you. And I think like in this age of Spotify that we're in, every band is seeing the the idea that like doing a collab is like doing a support tour, you know, yeah. it's like all of a sudden you get to reach this whole new audience. And, um, and it's just like become normal now. And it's so funny because like three years ago, I can't even remember bands collabing with other bands, you know, true, man. and now you true. finally see like a band name and a band name. You don't see like a band name. And then the singer of the band that you don't really know <laughs> what they're from. Like you see band featuring band. I think that's so cool, bro. I think it's like, yeah, man. the, the I, I think it's actually one of the things that, you know, I, I guess maybe I should have touched on this when you're asking why we're at the place where it is right now. I think collab changed it. I think collab is what really kicked down the door for it to be where it's at right now where it does look like all these people, whether they do like each other or not, you know, I see, I see both sides. Like, wait, who, it, tell me, tell me one that hates each other. T, T, <laughs> yeah, beef, yeah. Beef, beef, beef. Let's go viral. <laughs> um, um, you know what I'm saying though? Like, like, yeah. I, I think that's like a big part of what has kicked down the door. And um, I think that also comes with the, the way that we make music now before having to get in a garage with your five best friends, there wasn't really a chance to get the singer from your band that you like that lives in Florida to come to your garage and make a song with you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The way we make music now where you can email someone a session, mm -hmm. whether you love it or not, you know what I'm saying? Whether you're like a purist who's like, man, you make your music on tape. like. You know, it, <laughs> it has opened up the door. It, it, it's yeah. opened up the door for the, the idea of like working with your favorite artists. Like, bro, I'm getting one of my favorite bands in, in my entire life. So, like the first CD I ever bought, like I'm getting that band on one of my songs today, right now. No! And, like they're in New York, you know what I'm saying? And and it would never, it would never happen 
if we weren't where we're at, you know? So chat, chat, someone chat, someone find out who his first CD was. Someone Google that shit and let me know. And while you're you've at it, an interview before, for sure. You've, you've got, got, you've got to have told someone that. Get on oh, it, yeah. chat. Oh, yeah. And while you're at it, chat, I want to know, um, wrong answers only. Who would you like these guys to collab with? Uh, while you're doing that, I want to carry on down that road of collaboration. Um, no. What's it like when you, when you start to work with someone? Like you must have an idea in your head what it's going to be like, but it's rarely always like that in actuality. What have you learned from your collaborations? Austin, go ahead, brother. I think it like makes you reappreciate how special other people are at what they do. And that's my cheese ball answer, but it's true. That's wicked, like, man. No, because when you hear someone like, let's say I was like, it'd be cool to have these backup vocals go like, ah, you know, whatever. And then you actually hear someone who's like fucking insane at it. And they like layer it up and they do all this stuff. You're like, Oh my God, you like, some, like you collab a lot with like friends for the most part. And and you almost like when you're friends with someone, you just like hang out and do like whatever, like go get food and fucking, you know, uh, you almost kind of forget that. Like, you're like, Oh shit. My friends are really good at what they do. Oh my God. My friends are talented. Damn. And, and it's so cool to like, let them do their thing, especially when it's something that you can't personally do as well on, on some of your stuff. Like, um, you know what I'll say, I'll say I got, uh, one of my like favorite bands from back in Houston. Um, it was like a harder band, but I got the, uh, the front guy from that to do like some really heavy shit on this one track for us. And it's going to be like layered in stuff like that. And I'm like, when I hear, like, I send him references too. It's like, when you do this in this song and on the bridge, when you do this and it sounds like you're like legit, like, it sounds like your throat's coming out. Like, I want you to do that here and I'm going to like layer it up like this with what I'm doing. It's just going to be crazy. And he sent it over and I was just like, fuck. Like, and it's like something that I don't think I could do remotely as well as like he did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. And it's, it's that thought of even in your wildest dreams, you have an idea in your head, but you've put it in the hands of someone that talented yeah. or what they do that when it comes back, you're like, yo, that's even better than what I thought it would be. be like a fucking artist about it. I love that. I love that. It's also hard to, I don't think you can really give friends notes. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I get well awkward. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, Mod, who surprised you in your times that you've worked with people? Is there, is there a specific something that comes to mind when you've been collaborating with someone and it's just been like, wow, like really stopped you in your tracks? Oh my God, bro. It happens all the time. Like, like I get to work with amazing artists. Like I got like, you know, on my songs, I can tell you a specific one. And then I can tell you a specific one on like, because I get, I get to write with other people, you know, I do a lot of songwriting Please stuff do. like that. And like, um, when it comes to my song, like, obviously I'm just going to point to making a song with Avril, like the greatest singer ever who literally like, like this is someone who's such, such a good singer she can't sing with autotune like it doesn't she can't do it you know what i'm saying she's that crazy good that perfect pitch that amazing of a singer like the greatest voice of our generation really that good of a singer and you know the song that we did it's called flames i had the hook i sang the hook i recorded it like the song was there and i was like asked her to sing on it Bro, you should have seen my face when I heard her sing what I had sang. And I was just like, all right, like, I don't even know what I'm doing, really. You know, <laughs> um, it was hey, crazy. Hey, I mean, it, I'm it, with you. Yeah. Can yeah. You see what I've it, done there? It's, a, it's amazing seeing that. And then, like, you know, working with other people, like, you know, my, my favorite thing is this, man. Like, I'm, I'm all about, like I said, I, I spent I spent time in the world of rap. I spent time in the world of being in a notebook, writing down bars, knowing how to structure it, what a 16 is, knowing all this stuff. I spent my 10,000 hours inside of a notebook. Where I'm at now musically is I don't, I, I don't write. You know what I'm saying? I think that a lot of rap taught me that, like to go in, not be embarrassed. I never, that, that's my one tip for anyone that I work with. That's my one thing I push for with, with any time I get in the studios, not to be embarrassed, to like, walk in front of the mic, have no idea what I'm going to do. If I sound like a complete fool 
and I'm mumbling and I'm yelling and I'm, my voice is cracking. I'm getting very close to art. I always know that. And so when I get to work with other people, I like to see the magic happen. That that's, that's the most fun part for me is seeing them get connected. I think we all have an, an antenna, you know what I'm saying? Mm. When we're making art, whatever kind of art you make, I think we all have an antenna and you've heard you. I know you guys have all heard this from all the greatest songwriters, whatever of all time. They're like the best songs just appear. They just happen. That's true. They're not, they're not the ones that you spend three weeks figuring out the structure, figuring out the chords, figuring out the pre-chorus, the turnaround, the greatest songs, the greatest pieces of art, they appear and they happen just like that. And like, sometimes your antenna's up and you get connected to something and it just happens. You can't expect that to happen every time. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's why there's a quote that's like, inspiration happens, but it has to catch you working. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's why you gotta just work. That's why you have to go be there. You have to go be in front of the things that you love. You have to go be and spend time with your craft. If it happens every time, I mean, then you're, then you're Benny Blanco. <laughs> Austin, you're fucking funny, bro. Um, straight up, that's hilarious. Um, but 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 so that that's what I enjoy most. I like I love seeing an artist that that maybe typically isn't used to doing that, and they're used yeah. to being like, I don't get in front of the mic until I have what I'm going to say written down, practiced it, know my notes. I, I like to see when if there's a way for me to push an artist away from that and be like, yo, just go in, get in front of the mic, hear the music, see what happens. Just like see what happens. No embarrassment. Let me make you feel as comfortable as possible. Let me go in front of the mic first and go. <laughs> you know, let me make you feel like you're not going to be made fun of. And then the greatest things happen sometimes, man. I mean, for me, it, it's it's always it, it does. But, you know, um, I mean, I mean, when I watch someone, I always think those are the best things. Like, I yeah. always think the the naturalness, the magic, like hunting. I, I picture going into a studio, like hunting for magic in the wild, you know, like literally a hunter behind a bush, like w through a scope, like hunting for magic, you know. And I work with this guy named John Feldman and he he says to me all the time, he's like, yo, sometimes the song is just waiting for you at the studio. Just show up. The song was waiting for you, you know. It's, what that, like, how big a deal has Feldman been to this scene? Because, like, just in case, just in case anyone don't know, like, the thing is, man, like, having lived through it, like, I loved Goldfinger. I fucking loved Goldfinger back in the day. But like Feldman being like the linchpin, like him and him and Travis are like the Bro, two. The used album, the used oh, album. Mate, like that's all you gotta say. The story like, of, shout out the story of the year one as well. Yo, it's your story of the year. But yeah. yo, I'll just say this, like it's the craziest thing. When I was in a band called Four Letter Lie, way back in the day, we had just signed yeah. Victory. And um, <laughs> yeah, I wanna like, know what that was like too. What, yeah, signing to victory or playing yeah. Fuller Line? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Tony Bromo story. We got <laughs> yeah, it. Yo, yo, That's yo. A, hard. Oh, um, yo, so like, but but victory was like, yo, make a list of like who you want to work with. And like my my list was John Feldman. That's it. And they were like, you don't have the budget for John Feldman. So sorry. But that that is how long I've wanted to work with him. That was me, you know, being 17 years old and being like, he is the one person I want to work with, you know? And, and so to me, to me, he is the pinnacle person in, in all of this. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's mm. not the newcomer. He is true to this shit. He is definitely um, the one that is taught who a lot of people think is like the goat of this shit. Like Feldman mm. literally like had you as like the, that, that person was literally like his, uh, what you might call it, intern. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, for real, yeah. for real. So, I, so I give him his flowers every day, bro. Can I, I've got to throw this out there because, like, um, I'm a passionate man when it comes to this music. Like, it's literally, I came here because I'd done, every, I felt like I'd done everything I could do back in the UK. So I came here with it, and I, str I, I, show, I mean, I'm in North Hollywood now. Really? But, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm never going home. I love it. It's too warm. Uh, so so the, but the big thing for me was I lost it a little bit when, when Five Seconds of Summer happened. Like, my problem with it was I like a little punk with my pop punk. And what's happened now with... Were you a? With, 
Hey, were you a hater when they came out? I was such a hater, you big time. Hater. Fuck I you. know, man. Like, I, I'm always going to be real, though. Like, it, I appreciate it was too, that. It was too Nickelodeon for me personally. But Dude, I was teaching guitar lessons back then. It was like before we were like signed or anything. A lot of people wanted to learn them, and so I learned like three of their songs and was teaching them. I was like, this shit slams. Oh my god. It, it's it's sick that that kids are coming out and wanting to pick up the guitar because of them, which, you know, it, no one's first favorite band was Napalm Death. Um, but, but like, I don't want to meet but, that person. No, no, that, that person's in jail yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Their family but, has been cut up. <laughs> so, see, I, so I could like, I, I could, I couldn't reconcile with that. But what I like about what's going on now is attitude is there. There's attitude with this personality. And I I feel like as an interviewer, I've understood why um, bands have had to be really guarded around the press because it's clickbait headline time. But what I admire about... You want me to say some crazy shit that you can use? And like (laughs) social clips right now? By all means, by all means. Give them a thumbnail, Austin. (laughs) <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm saying is that I feel like there's an honesty that is with, like, especially you, Mod. Like, your story's mad. Like, when if people want to read your story, it's there and it's it's out there. And it, I think it enables people to to know who you are, that honesty, and that there is attitude with it. it comes back to punk rock. Like, authenticity is punk rock. Do you feel like that is... That's a thing that's going on right now is uh, like, uh, cause I, sh- I, I play bands like what you do to my audience and it's hit or miss. Same thing with people like Ghost Main, who to me, it just sounds like the fucking hardest shit ever, but it weirds people out. What people I like about it, it, man. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It, and it, at my age, it fucking sucks. Cause I want to be inspired and I like new sounds, yeah. but it feels like your scene has got loads of attitude to it. So that any of that, bullshit kind of comes falling down by people's ankles. Is that fair? Absolutely, man. I mean, again, if we want to keep talking about like why, why things, why, why things are working right now, like, I mean, yo, one of, one of my favorite bands in the whole world is Oasis. Like Liam Gallagher, like he taught me, like he's in my DNA and he taught me to be an open book. Like, I don't really know how to be like the dick, like Liam Gallagher, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. but I know how to be like, yo, all I know how to do is be authentic, tell my true story. If people don't fuck with it, like I'm not trying to do anything more than what I am, you know? And, uh, you know, there's like a whole element to the music. That's like, is it the way you look or is it the music that you make? You know it's what I'm saying? It's the way you look. Like, 100%. <laughs> I wore a knock loose hat special. Look, <laughs> dude, like I swear if anybody listened to fandom and didn't look at us. I don't think like if they heard it, like most of that, like 95% of that album, it wouldn't be called a pop punk thing, but I got hair. We have guitars. We played warp tour. Pop punk. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Got it. Yeah. Big time. that's my stance on it. Like, does genre matter? Does genre even fucking matter anymore? Cause like, it feels like, I guess. Like back in the day when you had to spend $25 or $20 on a record and yeah. like then you had to be tribal. But today, like I, I, I don't just watch comedy films. I watch every kind of film. Speaking of that tribalism shit, back to victory. Do you remember, yo, do y'all remember when he did the thing with Hawthorne Heights versus, I think it was Neo and it was like a rock versus rap thing and tried to make it about that. Do y'all remember that? <laughs> No, 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 no. You those, sent like, him off the Neo. Things. Yeah, people were people were pissed about it. But <laughs> but that was that's like my like whenever someone talks about like tribalism and genre shit, my brain goes right back to that. It's like the first example that comes to me. Wait, what was he, what was the point of it? To okay. what? It was to try and get Hawthorne Heights to have a higher first week than I think it was Neo. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so he'd be like, like they'd, Victory would be posting like all the street team shit, like go hide the Neo CDs, go do this. <laughs> oh, that's so corny, bro. I know. I'm like, man, fuck that guy. But like, you know, that's so corny. I know. I still, I, I will say fuck that guy, but I'm also still afraid he's gonna try to sue me one day. I've been mates with my, I've been, hey, I've been mates with my friends from Akala forever. Fuck that guy. Um, so. <laughs> 
and you mentioned Warp Tour as well. Um, I really feared for for this part of our universe, man. Like when Warped went down, what was your feel? Like Austin, that look says it all. Like it felt like the time was right for it to go away, but at the same time. Like it was such a big institution and it was, it was. so responsible for breaking like, bands. The the reasonable side of my brain says it was a, it's an insanely good thing and it really was. Objectively, 2016 we gained so fucking much because we met everybody there. You know what I mean? Like we spent three and a half hours every day just at our tent, like talking to anybody who would talk to us, passing out flyers, giving demo CDs. And we didn't like like it, it was, and we grew a lot too. You know what I mean? Like it's, we, we saw the result of that. Now the diva piece of shit side of me hated waking up at 11 and playing at 11 AM every day in 2018. I was so mad by 20. Okay. And then there was a 21 day stretch with no off days by day 18. I was like ready to fight. I was like trying to fight people. I was so pissed. My voice didn't work. So, oh, the one day we didn't play at 11 a.m., we played at 7 p.m. And it's because our trailer <laughs> spun out on the freeway. And we're like, hey, oh, shit. we're not going to fucking make it to 11 a.m. We're just assuming you're putting us there again. And so they put us last instead of first. I was like, fuck y'all. Oh, so man. the bitter diva and part of me that cares about my voice at all side is like, whatever. I don't have to do mm. that anymore. But then the objective part, like, obviously, it's very good for music and very good for alt music. And like, I'm grateful that we got to do it, mm. but this, oh my God, that diva part of me. <laughs> this, this is, this is, like, what do you, what do you think? Like with the resurgence of the scene, would it be right for Warp to come back or as sad? So like a lot of people in the chat are excited about sad summer. Like I like what So What Festival are doing in fucking Texas. I like the idea yeah. of seeing two chains and Parkway Drive on the same day. Like, totally. like where is there, is there space for Warp in like the way, with the, res with a the resurgence? Parkway, a Parkway and two chains collab would be fucking crazy. <laughs> All I want for my birthday <laughs> is a big booty in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> would you reckon? Like, high, high death is saying bring Warp back. Like, it, would there be a space? Mod, yeah. if, if, war, yeah. if Warp's, yeah. if warp's yeah, yeah, coming yeah. back, totally. are you signing yeah. up? Oh, yeah. No, it would be amazing. Even if I wasn't on it, I'd go, no matter what. Like, that's, that's interesting to me. Like, Warp Tour lives deep within my heart. Definitely the I whole, love going as a fan. That the not knowing when you're gonna play is like definitely the craziest thing. Playing at 11 a.m. definitely the craziest thing. Every but it's day. also yo. If you went through that though, I will say this: if you're if you're an artist that did Warp Tour, you're a monster. You're a monster <laughs> for the rest of your career. You are. You're just you just have a leg up on everyone. Like for real, to have to go through that and put yourself through that, like and love it because most of the, most of the thing about Warp Tour is like it is it is the environment that's so cool about Warp Tour. It feels like Warp Tour, no matter how many years went on, it still feels like Warp Tour. Like it's mm. a really, really great experience. And um, it's crazy that it ended right before everything came back. Like it's <laughs> yeah. fucking mad, bro. Like he pushed so hard through the years yeah. where it was like- It'll be back. It'll be yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I see it coming back too. I mean, Kevin Lyman, he's, he's, he's a hero, bro. He put me on Warp Tour when I hadn't even barely played shows as Mod Son, you know what I'm saying? So like, I have so much love for him. Um, I can only imagine, yeah, definitely. You know, he is one of the people too that that definitely mixed genres. Like Warp Tour always had different kind of yeah. artists. Even back in like 98, it was like, you know, you'd see like atmosphere and these like backpack rap bands like on Warp Tour and stuff. It was cool, it was always cool, but it should 100% come back. I agree. I agree. So we've only got like uh, another 12 minutes until we throw to you. So get your questions ready, everybody in the chat. I'm going to throw to you in about sort of 10 minutes or so, but I've got to ask about MGK um, because it's been the chat on everyone's lips. It's a large part of why we're in the mainstream again, whether people like it or not. And me personally, I've got no problem with anything that he's had, he's come out and said as far as when people have thrown shit his way. And I, I like one of my very, very good friends is the person that has been in the biggest beef with him, right? Like, I've got no problem with it. 
You know Eminem? Corey. Corey, <laughs> Corey in it? No. Like, like, I, like I, we, we fucked with each other for forever. But, like, when, if, if people say something to him, right, like, he, it's, he's right to have a go back. But when he came out and was in the press recently and was openly saying, like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm a big part of this as a resurgence, I don't think he's wrong. Right. So, so I don't, I don't what, what is it that seems to be upsetting the Apple car? Is it that he's come from rap music here? Like, what is it that, that has made people flip their shit? Because like he's, he's been good for guitar music in mainstream culture. Like I, as someone that is sick and tired of seeing their favorite bands get to album number three and have to split up because they can't fucking pay the bills anymore. Like getting guitars on the radio again is a massive thing. Like where do you guys stand on this? Cause it's a big thing at the moment. Austin, go ahead. Would you like to, I'll go ahead. I mean, bro, he's, 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 I mean, I can speak objectively besides the fact he's one of my best friends for the last 10 years. Um, and we've done loads of things together. Um, he's a moving target. He's polarizing. What is, what is more punk anyway than being polarizing? Right? Like what is more punk than like pissing people off? Like dude, dude, literally for, he didn't, he didn't get an anarchy symbol tattooed on his stomach. Like last year, dude, like he's had that on him since I've known him. Like he literally believes in all the things he says. He stands on his words. He's a real one. And I think it's corny to hate on him. Honestly, I think it's corny to hate on him. And like, whatever his beefs are that he has, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't really know where they start from, but I know that he says something. He stands on it, you know? He doesn't let people shit on him. I think that's cool. And musically, when it when it goes further to the music part of it, I think you're. I think people are stupid if they're saying his music ain't good. His music's good. His music's Agreed. good. He's got a good voice for this shit. He doesn't try. You know what I'm saying? Like we have, we have totally different voices. Like I, I have a very like higher register. He has a, a lower register, and he does what he's good at. He's a great writer. Y'all are tripping if you think he's not a great writer. And he's been one of the one of the, yo w- when he was rapping he was one of my favorite rappers like he's really good he's really talented and um i have nothing but great things to say about him bro and and the hate the hate almost outweighs the love in some cases in in his in his head you know and i think that's really unfortunate and bro i stand up for my best friends you know that's the way i roll so like whether i'm gonna be i know there's gonna be a ton of people watching this right now that are like fuck that, fuck you. And like, I'll take it. I'll eat that shit. It's all good. Like I stand up for my best friends. Also, I enjoy his music. I listen to it. And um, yeah. has he done things and pushed this shit to the next level? Again, you're blind if you say no. Like, it's just, it's the truth. He has, you know? And um, I'm not him. I'm not him. So I wouldn't, I don't know if I would be the, his personality and mine are different. And, uh, I can only say what I would say, but I know he believes in all the things that he says. So I believe in him for it, you know, and yeah. I back him and I'm glad I'm, I'm, I'm glad like, man, we, we worked on the song bloody Valentine together. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I got to write that with him and, uh, and Short that song film like, as well. yeah, yeah. That, that song like kicked down the door. So like, Man, I'm just I'm grateful as fuck to be a part of anything he's done. And I think he's I think he's uh his last album, I think is better than the one before it, you know? I think he's just on an incline, bro, and I'm super proud of him. And also, also just saying it too, I got empathy for him, you know. You, you we all might think that like when you're on top of the world, you got a number one album, you have you you think everything's great. You got millions of dollars. It ain't like that. It don't buy happiness. And like some of y'all out there that be shitting on him for no reason, like that, that hurts his heart too. It really does. So like, I got empathy for my bro and I'll, and I'll stand up for him in any case, anytime for the rest of my life. Can I ask about on a, on a, on a higher level, just to take it 
away from MGK. Like the the kind of eyes and scrutiny and level that comes with being like massively in the public eye. Mon, I, like, I didn't even know if it was uh, appropriate to say congratulations for uh, your engagement last week. Yes, congratulations. It. It's, it's, a beautiful th- it's a beautiful thing, man. But yeah, man, like, beautiful. I've been around, like I, the, the, one of the maddest things I've ever seen in my life is I went to a Britney Spears tour launch and I watched what it was like to be Britney Spears for about 15 minutes and was like, you couldn't pay me enough money in the world to watch the level of attention and scrutiny. And like, she can't move a muscle without everyone looking and seeing that. Like, no one can prepare you for that. No one can prepare you for that. And even like you guys, right? Like, it's of a certain level. What is that like to to go from... um, like a certain level of notoriety to a larger level of notoriety because no one prepares you for that shit, man. It's like, uh, like I went from being a print journalist to being on television in the UK in my field. And that's like this big, but the, the, I didn't change at all, but everything I looked at and how people treated me changed in an instant and no one can prepare you for that. It's like being shot out of a cannon. What's that like from your perspective? Cause you'd like, you guys are on, you know what I mean? A different planet to, to me. I mean, obviously nowhere near Britney size or anything like that at yeah. all. So I'll never understand what it is she goes through. Like everything that I've and everybody has seen on her part is fucking insane and horrifying. Um, God, it's fucking hard to imagine because even just for like me, yeah, there's definitely been times where I'm just like, holy shit. If one more person fucking looks at me right now, I'm going to freak the fuck out. You know what I mean? Like there've been times yeah. been hard to handle, especially, I mean, especially online, you know what I mean? Where I'm just like, Oh my God, if I look at my, I'm going to throw my phone if I open it again, like, um, or I've, you know, I haven't had the Twitter app or like there was, there was like a, uh, I think, January and February, I didn't have the app and I felt so much better. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? And the thing is, you can't be mad at it though. because I mean, when you do like what we do, uh, I mean, it's not a fucking accident. We're not here. We didn't slip and fall and go, oh, fuck. Like people know the words to our songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, no, that's definitely hard to handle. And yeah. I, it's not normal for any person to have that kind of input positive or negative you know what i mean like yeah. too many people being like you saved me i'd be dead you're a genius da, da, da. like all this stuff i'm just like oh fuck like it, it it's almost like it almost does what tiktok does where it just like brutalizes like your emotions a little yeah. bit you know what i mean and i don't know again again i'm nowhere fucking near like Britney's eyes or anything like that. So I, I can't imagine her life or I can't even imagine being remotely normal after dealing with that for, my God, I don't like however long, but to, anyway, to answer your question more directly, yes, that shit, that shit can be difficult. Yeah. Mod, like yours, you've um, dated people of massive notoriety. Like, and of course, your 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 deal at the, at the moment with engagement. Like, how has that been? Because that's a that's a swing, man. That's a big swing. Yeah, uh, you know, to be honest, like it breeds insecurity at the very core of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you got to just hope, like you're saying, there's nothing that can prepare you for it. You got to just like hope that the people that you idolize were people like Bob Dylan or Johnny Rodden, or like I said, Liam Gallagher, that are people that are like, kind of give you the idea that you can only be authentic in those times and you can't play the whack part of the game where, where it's like, you can't feel like you can be yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, Being judged by people you don't know, like, I guess that at the end of the day is actually a gift, right? to be judged by people that don't know you is kind of part of the gift of what you do with art. Right. Um, nobody no. there's, I don't think there's a painting in history that's been put on a wall that has unanimously been loved by everyone. Right. That's true. So I kind of think of, I kind of think of that, you know what I'm saying? And I like to think that if my life is a canvas, it is, Oh, 
my canvas is heavy, not because of the size, but because of the, um, the amount of layers, you know what I'm saying? And I like to just focus on being able to have some kind of influence in this world and really be able to keep myself, but I've definitely had a lot of trouble with it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm able to like hide it from the public in a way, but that's not the best thing to do. The best thing to do is be an open book. And anytime I've shared my story, it seemed to have either made me feel better or do something positive for my art and what I do. Um, That's what it's all about. Yeah. So, I mean, definitely, I think it's important to look up to the right people, to have the right heroes when you want to be a part of this life. And um, I think we can all see fake from a mile away. I really do. I really think like you can, you can feel authenticity, you know? Um, Amen. But Amen. like I said, bro, I'm a, I'm an eternal optimist. I really am. So is it shitty? Yes. But it's also the gift of being able to do this. You know, it really I is. It. It's what comes with it, you know? I love it. I'm an enthusiasm enthusiast myself, man. So before I start throwing questions out to the chat, Austin, funeral gray, man. Like we've seen all the posting. What about it? And we've seen and we've, and we and we've seen your Twitter today suggesting you've got a new record label as well. It's got to be an exciting time to be in water parks. What is going down funeral gray? And like, just what is this week going to be like in water parks world? How funny would it be if I just went silent the rest of the week? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Delete your account. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, nah, man. I uh, I don't know what's going to happen this week, honestly. Like, I'm telling you, with talking about the label today, I, uh, I was at the studio, and I was just like, I'm going to tell them. And then I made the thing that says, like, I wrote it. Uh, oh, I went, I went up front to our, where our day-to-day is at. I was like, Miles, I'm going to tell him about the label. And I walked back and he's like, okay. <laughs> and so... Do, 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 uh, they know, do they know to not say no to you? Well, they know that there's going to be a lot of conversations. If, uh, if they're like, don't do it, I'm like, why? <laughs> why not? Uh, but, uh, yeah, I know. Um, it's exciting. I, uh, you know... That's kind of, it's made things uh, take a little longer than I would have preferred. Like I'm, I'm very much on the wave of like, I want to have something new out every like four months, even if it's like just a single or like a new video or whatever. Um, but, uh, but, you know, us being involved with like a new label and getting like building a new team and all this stuff, like it's made things take longer than I'd prefer. You know what I mean? Like I would prefer that some of this stuff was out in like fucking March. And so it's been yeah. so hard for me to sit here and just be like, ah, God, just like have these songs. Because at first, when you have a demo and like only you have it, maybe like one other person, it feels like a fucking like inside joke. You know what I mean? Like you have like a secret thing and you're like, ooh, no one fucking knows. And it's stuck in your head sometimes. And you can make references or whatever. But then when you sit on it for like months, you're like, fuck this joke. I want to put it out right now. And you get like super impatient. Um, but anyway, all that to say, it's been cool to, uh, to uh, I guess, get the ball rolling on that and know that there's um, people behind it that give a shit and like let there be time to like, you know, get these people like to like get on the same page because it would suck to – you know, start a rollout and they're like, but this is our social media person. They do this and this. I'm like, no, don't touch it. You know, like I'm very particular and yeah. I, I have a tendency to like micromanage shit. I've been trying to let it go. Cause you know, it's going to like eat my brain. Um, but I think getting everybody familiar with the project and like on board with how things go is more important, um, to do at the start rather than like once two songs are out and then, you know, people start, you know, maybe like start butting heads if things operate, you know, like, uh, in, a, in a way that, you know, they don't expect. Can I say, this is the first time that we've ever spoke, Austin. It is so fucking endearing to feel your excitement for your new music. It is so I'm fucking cool. Excited. I love it. I love it, man. man. Uh, 
Mod, um, you're outside of rock music stuff coming. Are we allowed to talk about that or not? That sure. we were talking about before. Oh, it's right. So you you did you did a short film um, last year. A- any more ambition in that world? Uh, in the world of short film, possibly, but more importantly, we did like my writing and directorial debut of a feature film um, is going to be really soon. A trailer will be coming out for that soon. Oh, uh, shit. Again, again, in this world, like you never say dates until basically like the day before because um, cool. you never know what's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, like I've wanted to do this my entire life. I, I think it's something that... Um, is dear to my heart is to not tell people that they can only be good at one thing. So I've Fuck always yeah. tried to be able to do more than one thing and film and writing. Like I have six books out. I've been writing forever. Whoa. And, you have um, six? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, six shit. books. Congrats. That's awesome. Get Thank it. you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. It's one of my, I mean, you know, to music is intangible. You can't hold it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You, you can hold a CD, you can hold a booklet. You cannot hold the song. Um, I think that books to me have always been something because it gives people something to hold after you die, you know? Um, so I think it's very special. I urge everyone out there to write. Um, but with movies, it's something that I think maybe, I don't know, every artist says as a kid, they're like, I'm going to make a movie one day. And um, man, we finally did it. Sat down, wrote a script, sold a script. Uh put it into motion, put, got, got someone to buy the script and then got a cast together and really shot a movie for a month and then sit there and edit it. It's definitely been the, the hardest thing I've ever had to work on in my entire life. It's definitely a whole different monster from making music and making an album. Um, but we made this really, really amazing movie and uh, it'll be coming out soon. Did you, did you... I, wait, wait, I want to know about that process because I'm genuinely interested. Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the yeah, ask me a question. Yeah, like, no, like, okay. The way you make an album, you have, like, an album board. You have, like, a bunch of songs. You narrow it down. You go in and do, like, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like, you do all the organic drums in one day. You do this. and Like, like I, I understand how that goes. How do you make a movie? Like, the movie? Okay, so obviously it all starts with, with an idea, you know, as everything. Yeah. And then you write a script, and, like, you want a synopsis of it at first. You basically want like the little thesis. You want to be able to sell it in a paragraph. You want to be able to sit down at a table with someone and sell it to them in one breath, truly, you know? Um, and then you write a 120 page script around it and um, really just sit there. And there's a lot of things you can study in film, mm-hmm. but as a director, the number one thing you want to study is being able to direct energy. You know what I'm saying? So there's two sides of it. Like the writing side of it is just, is very similar Austin to, to literally making a song. It's like a really long song, you yeah. know, like instead of the pre-chorus being like 10 seconds, it's like 30 pages, you know? Right. Um, but there's a heartbeat to it and you sit down and you write a script and you got to sell it. You got to be able to have something that has like a hero's journey. You know, that's really important in the writing where whatever topic you're, you're making a movie about, you want the audience to think that the main character is essentially at the end of their life. And then they go from caterpillar to butterfly and transform. Mm -hmm. And um, you want to be able to have something very powerful like that. And then once you get to the the selling of a script, then it just becomes insane. You do pre-production for a month where you're doing locations, just yeah. like a music video, but you have like 15 different locations. You have yeah. a DP lined up. You have mm-hmm. to think of like, you would be great at this, bro. I know you'd be so great at this because it is like, you have to have the mind that is like so focused on like the full spectrum yeah. of it, like colors, bro. Like that's, that's why like the color palette of a movie, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I know you would understand that. And um, it's a crazy process, bro. And then the, the shooting of it is a whole other, it could go on for as long as, long or as, you know, short as yeah. you want. But ours was like a month and getting a cast together and then getting people to understand the role of mm-hmm. what they're playing yeah, and getting into someone's mind and creating a character. Um, it's a very long process, bro. But ours kind of happened in like, light speed time 
We basically really? wrote this script like maybe a year and a half ago. Okay. And within a year, we had shot it. And that's crazy. Yeah. Making it yeah. happen, man. Making it happen. Yeah. I love that. Can I, can I get you to reference three movies for the film that you've got coming out? Like three what? Three of my favorite? No, three, three movies that you would put your movie in the same kind of bracket as. Oh, okay. Okay. Definitely like... Um, we tried to basically make what what I'll just say it like this. We tried to make what super bad would look like if Wes Anderson did it. Oh shit. Nice. Nice. Right? You feel me? So like, you know, you think of like what a stoner comedy is. Um, and most stoner comedies are like revolve around like the joke, right? Um, but they don't look like what, okay, like what Fight Club looked like when I watched it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and focused a lot on what the cinematography of what a stoner comedy would look like. I love it, man. I love it. Rushmore for life. All right, chat, give me some questions. Like, let's, uh, let's get you involved. I, I've had my say, Austin, mate, if you ever, if the music don't ever work out, man, interviewing is your next step. That was good, go good going, buddy. Good, good going. Why can't I see the chat? So uh, first question comes from Fizz Soda saying, what percentage is the album completed so far for Austin? Mm, 95, 96%. 95. Oh, love yeah. that. This is a really good one from Eliana. Seeing as we've got you both here and this has been, I've got to say, pause, it's really... Pause. Go for it. Anytime someone prefaces a question with, this is a good one, it's not. But go ahead. Uh, well, <laughs> I, 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 I think so. But, but my judgment is not always the best. <laughs> yeah. Eliana asks, would you guys collaborate? Because this has been really inspiring, this. And like you, you vibe a lot on various different things. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just... I'm just you know, just Cupid here trying yeah. to make it happen. No, that, that could be sick. Um, I'm especially interested in like the, uh, the movie way. Oh. Like, like, because like, he, just like hearing like, the, like how, like, my, like how hard you work on that and like talking about color palettes and stuff like that. I'm like, that sounds fucking sick. Yeah. I think you'd be great at it, bro. Do you direct, do you do di any directing of I, your guys' own videos? And stuff? Videos, yeah. Yeah. Sick, man. It'd be awesome. But I love water parks. I think you guys are amazing, man. Like I was saying just before this started, I think like the coolest thing is you definitely, you kind of said it at the beginning, but it's like taking things that you love and pushing it to the next level. Like, I think you guys really do that. I think you're amazing, Thank man. You. Yeah. I, that means, that, that means a lot. Thank you. I love it. All right. Uh, Look at you, uh, Terry, being a math it, maker. Hey, I, 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 do, I do what I can do. You sicko. <laughs> Austin, what's your next hair color going to be? I have no hair, so... I'm going to shave my fucking head! Yes, B, B's appro uh, appreciation night. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of people asking that. So, yes! uh, uh, Michael, please, uh, I-L-Y. Uh, Mod, are you thinking about writing another book? Six is a lot, but do you get inspired to, to write like literature quite a lot? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, there's, there's always, um, poetry being written. Um, but I wrote, my first book was called Did I Ever Wake Up? Which was definitely like a creative writing slash self-help slash kind of new age philosophy kind of book. Um, I definitely have another one of those in me. And then as far as like a novel goes, I haven't done that yet. So like we've turned what would have been a novel into like a movie with this movie coming out. Um, but definitely, man, always writing. I definitely, I have another poetry book that's almost ready. And then doing Wicked. another, doing another kind of did I ever wake up would be great. Brilliant. Zazal asks, how does the creative process, especially because you're both working on records at the moment, uh, how does the creative process of making an album affect you mentally? Because there's a lot of ups and downs with it, but like, how is, how is the journey of making a record, especially at this point in time where it, it's when, when you've got lesser fan, ba fan base uh, to think about, like the pressure is less, but when you've got more of a back catalog and more things to compare it to and all of those sorts of things, how is it to make a record at the moment in terms of the mental journey of making a record? 
I think it's easier now. I think that making greatest hits was kind of tough just because uh, I obsessed over it. I didn't leave my house. I was very like hyper detailed to the point where almost, and then you had to like live with it. So it was like, you know, hyper detailed everything. And then you sit with it for so long and you start to kind of second guess things where with this album, I, I've kind of been at least doing my best to, um, I've kind of been putting like a cap on how much I let myself work on certain things. Not like, I'm not saying if something is incomplete, I'm just gonna be like, fuck it, it's done. But I'm not gonna sit here until three in the morning, like hitting my head on the wall being like, but how do I make this fucking better? How do I make this intro do this? What's the live thing gonna do right now? I'm just like, 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 like uh, what you were talking about. Also, I just realized it says Danielle next to your name. <laughs> I, looked up, I was like, I almost said Danielle, and I was like, "You're not Danielle. You, know, you are. That's hilarious." Um, Shout out my sister. No, you're, yeah, you're real, pick up Danielle. Danielle, I'd love that so much. <laughs> um, but no, it's like, like the best stuff just comes to you, like you were saying earlier. And um, I think that's kind of been the vibe with this. I've tried to, like, if I'm stuck, instead of just you know being like going and sitting on the couch over there, I could go to the beach. You know what I mean? Or, Love it. Or like, I can just do like all kinds of things to like take the, take my mind off it, take the pressure off it and just let the coolest shit happen. And then like, like ideas, it feels like they're just like, like everywhere. And sometimes you like fucking like one hits you in the head and you're like, Oh, that one. Like, uh, no, like the other day in the car, or not the other day, but like maybe like two months ago in the car for the first song, I, all of a sudden, like at once it hit me and I was like, ah, and I took a voice memo and I was just like, okay, the drum's gotta be like this, da, 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 da. And then at this part we need a noise. It's like, shh, and it's gonna be like this. The tempos can stop here and here, but it needs to keep going like, like, and it, like, like letting the ideas come to you like that rather than sit here and be like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, I'm just saying now, I think this album is going to be the essential water parks. This is like the classic one. I'm just saying it. Yes, get it, Austin. Amazing. I feel comfortable calling that. Good. Good for you, man. I love oh, confidence. Get it, Austin. Yes, yeah. mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the posse on this chat has been so wicked. I love it. Underscore Bella says, what advice would you give to your younger selves? So much, but you go ahead. Well, all you got to do is not give up. The day you give up is the closest you ever were to it. And uh, I would definitely also say um, you're right. So stop, stop second guessing yourself. The second, the second that you start, you know, I, I guess truly what I would say in one sentence is try not to think instead of overthink when it comes down to what you're doing and making. I love try not to I love overthink. That at all mm -hmm. the instinct goes a long way man and the, like i often find the first thing that you think of is quite often the right thing because it's intuition 100 yeah. percent. follow the instinct follow the instinct it's rarely wrong i agree i agree natty four asks um us thoughts on mental health but i wanted to ask us uh, like mean? thoughts well, on well, mental health no, so, so i was i was going to extend that into okay. like i think that there comes, because it's such a big conversation in the modern era, there, there comes a certain level of responsibility and like being a role model that people don't sign up for when they just pick up a guitar and write in songs. Like, how does that, how does that change um, how you present yourself moving forward? Because it's such a, it's a thing that no one signs up for. I, like one of the best things I've heard about my, my job is someone said to me once, no one gets into a band to talk to journalists, please. <laughs> I, thought it was I did, great. and I'm glad we're was, doing this. Yeah, me too, me too. But I always love that line. But I always think that that's a side of things that people aren't prepared for. Like, do, you, do, you, do when you you you're both such posy guys. Like, I say that how this chat's been. Like, how, like how does it how does it affect like how you are publicly knowing that people look up to you and see you as role models. I think it's important to remember, and I've said this before, you're not as tight as everybody thinks you are, but you're also not as shitty. And that's even more important. 
people can think you're a piece of shit. And as long as you know, you're not, as long as you're comfortable with yourself. And like, I mean, I've had to do so much fucking therapy about this shit. Like, like I have multiple therapists that I still fucking see. And I'm just saying like, it's just so. You can't go into it trying to be a role model. You just ha like, if you are like, if you're a good person, great. Like people are going to look at you. If you're a piece of shit, uh oh, they're still going to look at you and they might emulate you. And that's not good because maybe more pieces of shit are going to be running around. That's not fantastic. So, I mean, I think, uh, even though I post pictures of piss or whatever, like I'm still a good person. And I think that, mm, I don't know, man, that's a, that's a, that's a tricky subject. Yeah. Cause I mean, you also don't get into it to be like, I'm going to be a role model. Like you just, we fucking yeah. rhyme for long enough and now people hear it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I don't I'm know. I, Cause I, I didn't necessarily look at like, actually, you know what, you know, what is a good example of this? I used to watch life on the murder scene, like fucking almost every day, the Mike M DVD. Yeah. And there was part where Gerard was like shitting on this one band who was giving backstage passes to girls who would like, uh, like flash the crew members or whatever. And he was like, fuck them. Fuck that. That's not why you make music. And I was like, Oh shit. Like that. I think like, so I guess as long as you like use your, like, I don't want to say platform, use your, the awareness of you in a good way. And you're not a fucking creep asshole. Like, you're doing well. <laughs> I, I, I'm so stoked for MCR to come back as well, man. Like, uh, like oh man, do you, uh, do you think there'll be new music? I think there will be new music. Fingers That's crossed. It. Fingers crossed, man. Fingers crossed. Um, I, I wanted to ask as well, what the fuck is the piss drawer then? I've seen, listen here, chat. I don't know what the piss drawer is, but a lot of people have been bringing up the piss drawer, Austin. What are they talking about? I don't know what the fuck piss drawer is. Don't lie to me, Austin, from Water Parks. <laughs> First, you call me a jester. <laughs> then you call me a liar. I'm about to log off. I'm out of here. No! Pissed off. <laughs> they're, they're, they're laughing as well. Look at them, Austin. Don't look. They're saying it now, not me. I can't fucking read. <laughs> that is a good enough answer for me. All right, gang. We've got about 10 minutes left, so give us another couple of questions. Um, you mentioned the music DVD. What were your favorite music DVDs growing mm -hmm. up? I was obsessed with Slipknot's um, Welcome to the Neighborhood, uh, Pantera's Home Video 3, and the Eureka Chronicles, Blink-182, were my three. Oh, that was so that, good. That is so good. good. I love the drive through DVD, drive through Records DVD. I watched that shit a million times. Yeah. And you read the Chronicles a million yep. times. Who were the bands that stood out on the drive through one? Oh my God, I love the starting line. I love the, I loved the early November. Um, oh yeah, good choice. Loved, I love, dude, Homegrown, Kings of Pop. Yes! Yes! Homegrown, hey, records. Hey, I was showing people Homegrown during the last tour and they were like, oh. what the fuck? <laughs> Bro, Wait. how did that band not take over the it world? Me, and it's me, and I now it's AM, it's me. Yeah. Yo, I and the album I, cover, yo, the album cover with the girl with the grill, with the grill. is so hard, bro. That is. I love it. I've never made a pop punk mixtape without Hit Me, Diss Me on it. Spot on. Love it. Yo, guys. yes. Oh, my Massive. God. So good. Massive. Austin, uh, DVDs growing up. Okay. Um, I mean, like I said, Life on the Murder Scene, Eureka Chronicles. Um, I had like three of the Taking Back Sunday ones for Louder Now. Yeah. Um, what a record as well. Oh, my Under, God. Like, underrated Louder Now. That's their, that's not underrated. It's properly rated. It's, it's not it, underrated. It's, it's only because when they do like the, 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 like, but when they do the tours, it's it's like yeah. everyone's always after tell all your friends and all the rest You're of it. Right. Louder, louder now's fucking louder now fucking smashes. Tell all your friends. I'm just gonna say that. <laughs> I'm with fuck. you. High yeah. times. Like, um, fuck. Um, I had the uh, Panic at the Disco DVD. That was sick. The Live in Denver one. I had the uh, Coheed and Cambria DVD. I had, oh, I had a couple census fail ones. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, motion city soundtrack. Uh, What's a band? What's a band? Yeah. I had a Hawthorne Heights DVD. Shout out, Tony. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
You can't fucking sue me. It's fine. Um, uh, let's see. I had a lot, dude. Actually, I used to go, uh, there was a, a CD warehouse, like where they had like used CDs and DVDs. And I would go and I, a lot of times I would just buy DVDs and be like, I'm going to see if this is cool or not. That's actually how I got Taking Back Sunday. I bought I bought Louder Now because the cover was cool. It was like a special edition Tell All Your Friends one. It had like a lumpy green like sleeve with like shiny gold letters on it. And I was just like, oh, fuck. And like, I've always just been about shiny shit. And that's like how I got that. Um, but anyway, I pulled so many DVDs from there. So shout out CD Warehouse. They're closed down now, but. So, oh, I remember but, that shit. Before we go, I want to ask, what have you been listening to lately, both of you? Is there, has there been anything that's been standing out that you've been listening to, old or new? Because it's been so funny. So one of the things that I do is I host the Ben Sevenfold's official podcast. Um, we, we've Whoa, been really? going in. Yeah, man. They're, I they're the best. I love Ben Sevenfold. Oh, my God. <laughs> they are be- like an incredible band and even yeah. better humans. Um, yeah. are, the they, are they nice? Are they nice? The, the top of the tree, the top of the tree. I've just moved into a new place and they've been texting and making sure I'm all right and everything. They are the, the absolute best. I love best. them. That's awesome. And, but the thing is, when we talk about their songs, they mention Kanye, they mention Billy Joel, yeah. they mention Bark, like it comes out of anywhere. But yeah. what have you been listening to lately? Um, um, I love this new artist named Tom the Mailman. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. Tom the Mailman, amazing. I'm writing he it down. New, yeah, he just dropped a new project. Um, one of my favorite albums from last year was this kid, Lil Lotus. You guys know Lil Lotus? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, really good. Yep. Love Lil Lotus. Um, older shit, I'm just on a huge, huge Oasis binge right now. My and man. Um, another older one that I'll throw out and then let Austin go would be the honorary title. You remember the honorary title? Yes, that was a victory one too, right? No, no. I think, who, they who were they? Who were they? Uh, that, they might've been Doghouse? Were they Doghouse? Really? Maybe. Huh. Okay. Damn. Uh, yeah, I definitely know that name. The honorary title, though, one of the best singers, man. One of the best singers from the scene, for sure. Mm. Let me look up what they were on. I can't remember that band. I, I feel oh, like they were the, so I feel good. Like I'm letting the side down here, man. Austin, sure. while we're looking it up, what have you been listening to, man? I mean, obviously, Kanye. Throw it back to Britney Spears, of course. I've been listening to a lot of Enrique Iglesias, but uh, I'm going to be honest. The thing I've been, oh, and Turnstile, the album's obviously great. Charlie Puth dropped a new single. He makes me insecure. He's so good. Um, but yeah, he, he just dropped a new one. And then honestly, like 90% new water parks, just because like when you're working on it, you know, like you're making notes and like you're, and like you get a mix back and you're like, I'm going to listen to this 10 times now. Like, I love it. So that's kind of been the jam. All right. Uh, I'll do the same with movies before you go as well, because let, let's end this up. Good films that you've seen lately? Anything standing out? Fuck. You go I think, first. I, I'm I saw that X movie. It was really, I really good. I want really bad. Yeah, I want to see that too. Did you go to theaters or what? Is it yeah, all in theaters? It's yeah, still it's, out. Yeah. it's sick. It's so, friend, it's so good, man. My friend Travis just told me that everything all at once is movie of the year and he's uh, like a major movie nerd so i trust him um honestly dude when i watch movies i just go on and i pick a horror movie for the most part like 90 percent of the time and i just let it happen and then by the end i'm like oh fuck and then i watch something else and i go to sleep <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think of any of really st- like there's been some fucked up ones um how's the gucci was pretty good it's a pretty oh, good story. Good. I had I had no idea what it was going to be about, and it was nice. Did you see the Batman? Have you seen the Batman? I haven't I seen that yet either. Ah, it's good. It's good. It's long, but it's really good. That's yeah. what I heard. That's that's so, literally what everybody has said. Yeah, our our tour. All right, so everyone I know has really enjoyed it, and then our tour manager Lucas, he uh, uh who actually just texted me, um, he uh, he didn't enjoy it, but. <laughs> but I'm gonna throw this out there. There is all like he's not the dude to ask about movies. Like one time, uh, kind of recently, uh, my friend John and I were trying to get Lucas to hang out with us, 
And he was like, I'm busy. We're like, what are you doing? He's like, watching Crudes 2. And we're like, fuck you, <laughs> fuck Crudes 2, you bitch. And so when he says something like, that man's bad, I don't fucking trust it. I'm just like, oh, <laughs> I haven't seen it myself, but I'm like, you don't know. I love it, I love it. Chat, can we spam posy vibes before we go? Because this is the first time I've spoken to either of you, and I so hope we bump into each other IRL, because yeah. my son... Austin, this has been an absolute blast. It's been my first time here on Amazon Music as well. So, chat, it's so nice to meet so many of you for the first time. Um, don't forget, Amazon Music is the place to be. Go check out all things punk. You can check out Punk Scene. You can even ask Alexa. Just say, Alexa, play Punk Scene on Amazon Alexa, Music. Alexa, play Punk Scene. There you go. I hope that that is going off absolutely everywhere. We look Yo, forward. Why Alexa just turned on? This is yeah. Fun. Let's go. Turn off. Alexa, <laughs> pause. <laughs> I love it. Hey, we're, we're looking forward to Funeral Grey. Mod Sun, once again, a beautiful, beautiful thing. Congratulations on your engagement. We look forward to new music from you as well. It's good to yeah. know that there's some good stuff coming by the end of the summer. Good luck with the movie. This is Group Thread Shreds. We're going to be back next week. I can reveal to you. The three of us, we're all going to be back next week. We'll be so back. We we damn, sure, damn well should be. I can guarantee Turnstile are going to be here. So I'll see you next week. Make sure you keep it locked on all things Amazon Music. I've been Bees. He's been Mod Sun. He's been Austin from Water Parks. And you've been really great. Gang, we'll see you soon. Austin, you're awesome, bro. Great talking awesome. to you. Yeah. Very much. This is so nice to meet both of y'all.